Welcome to Talk Wildlife. I thought I'd give you a brief introduction to moth trapping today. Um, the moth that you've seen on the wall there, that's an eyed hawk moth. One of the larger moths that we have in the country uh, because the hawk moths are the bigger moths. And what I've got here is a moth trap. So this is a really cheap basic uh, skinner trap. Uh, you don't have to spend a fortune. In fact, you could actually make your own skinner trap. There are some plans online. And it's basically just a mercury vapor light on the top. Uh, there's a bar that goes across the middle, a couple of pieces of perspex that go to a gap, and then inside I've got egg boxes, which is where the moths settle. It's important to say that all of the moths that I catch, I always let go. Um, I don't kill anything, and I don't kill anything to identify it, because some you have to actually uh, dissect them to identify them. I, I don't do that, I'd rather not know what it is. So this particular one is a Skinner trap. There are two other types of traps. That's the Heath trap and there's the Robinson trap. And I mean, I've chosen to use this just because I've had it for years and it does the job. So I put this out last night. I've got, I haven't looked in the trap yet, but I reckon that I've probably got about 30 species today. Uh, the most I've had in this garden is probably around about 50 to 60. So that, to put in context, is as many moths in a trap in one night as there are butterflies in the country. So it's actually really well worth doing. And they, they range from sort of that size right down to sort of less than a millimetre some moths. So it's a really interesting hobby. So just to give you a bit of context as to where the actual moths come from that come into my garden, I have got some pollinating plants in the garden uh, and I have got some plants that are good for moths. Um, you know, Buddleia they're attracted to, all that's not flowering yet, uh, but also things like honeysuckle. Uh, so I do attract them into the garden using pollinating plants. However, this is where the bulk of my moths come from. Um, this is Whispering Oaks Common and uh, there's going to be a lot of food plant out there for them, uh, a lot of flowers around the periphery um, and also where we've left long grass where it hasn't been cut there's going to be a lot of wildflowers in there uh, that will attract some of the moths that actually end up in the garden. So what they're attracted to actually is the light. So we all know that moths are attracted to light, uh, there's numerous reasons why uh, nobody's actually completely arrived at one answer. Um, but that's what attracts them into the garden. So really anybody that's got a small garden can actually attract moths in various numbers. So once you've drawn your moths into your trap or into your garden, uh, the obvious next step is to try and identify them. But don't be sort of too, in too much of a hurry to do that. Uh, just sort of enjoy them for what they are first of all, and you know, get to know them, get to know sort of how they respond to where you're trying to catch them, to put them in a pot, and then sort of think about identifying a few of the more common species they're getting in the trap. And for that, you're going to need some books. So uh, I've got sort of three books. Um, these two here are the Bloomsbury Wildlife Guides. And you can see that they're quite thick, but they have to cover sort of over two and a half thousand moths. And you've got the micro moths, you've got the macro moths. Macro moths are anything sort of, in theory, bigger than a centimetre. Uh, micro moths, smaller than a centimetre. And I, I suggest you start off with just looking at the macro moths. In fact, a lot of moths don't even look at micros at all. Uh, micros are sort of notoriously difficult in the main, uh, and you do have to sort of sometimes, uh, unfortunately, dissect the genitalia to find out what they are, which I never do. Um, so these two are really, really good guides. So the Bloomsbury guides, and as I say, sort of start off by looking at the sort of the, the macro moths. Uh, which is the guide to moths. You'll see this says micro here. Uh, another one, so th these are actually drawings. So these are, uh, and paintings done by um, Richard Lewington, who is outstanding. So the pictures in here are absolutely amazing. If you prefer a photographic type guide, then this one here is the Manly book. Now, th this one covers 
micro and macro moths and it's all done by photographs so again it's it's down to you as to which your preference is whether you prefer to use sort of the photographs or whether you prefer to use the actual artwork um, and it, it's up to you to decide you know which, which one works um, I use both and I've also got an atlas of uh, moths that's just come out so I know sort of roughly where they found all of this and this one now also do have maps in as well uh, but that just plays to my geekdom um, so yeah I, I recommend any of these but don't rush into it you know start off by I mean there are books out there that um, cover butterflies and moths so they don't have as many moths in them but they have some of the more common ones so that might be an easy stepping stone in to start to identify some of the, the sort of more common moths in the first place um, but once you get into it you will get hooked uh, it is it's a fantastic thing to do um, and you'll never get bored of, of seeing moths in your garden because there'll always be something new so go out and give it a bash i hope you enjoy it bye